All right. Today I want to talk about the nine tools that I think are most important in business right now. So this is 2022. These are all the tools that I use on a day to day basis. I'm going to go over these pretty quickly about one minute each. So in order to do that, I'm going to quickly give an overview of the product. And then I'm going to talk about how I use it in my day to day. I'm going to link to all these below. Some of them require a little bit of onboarding. So if you see something that you like and you're inspired by what the product does, take a look at it, sign up for an account and give yourself a couple days or a week to just ramp up to learn how to use it. And I think then it will be a huge value add to your workflow. Okay, with that in mind, let's get in the first product that I want to talk about, which is called Playbook. So full disclosure, I invested in Playbook, but I invested in them because I was obsessed with the product and it was changing my workflow. So a bit of a chicken and egg, it doesn't change my opinion at all. I still think it's a critical tool for product managers, marketers, or anyone who's dealing with a lot of assets. Because what Playbook does is it syncs all of your image files from Google Drive, Dropbox, all these different places, and then seamlessly pulls them in to an interface that you can scroll through all of the images quickly. This saves me a ton of time, a lot of stress, and just frustration because I spent a lot of time before uh, going back and forth looking for the right images to use in ads. So the way that I use it is, of course, if I'm making ads, I like to see all of the images that I could potentially use. And then also I use it for other things that involve a lot of image consolidation. I have swipe files. So I have a swipe file for different Facebook ads that I really like, and I'll put all of those in my playbook so that I can scroll through all of my inspiration at once instead of worrying about accessing different um, files or folders. So if you haven't checked out playbook, then 100% this is an easy tool to get onboarded to, and I think it could have a big impact on your day to day. So I would recommend take a look at that. Next, I wanna talk about Webflow, which is kind of at the forefront of this low code, no code movement to empower people who don't know how to code or who don't have an engineering background with developer tools. And in Webflow's case, it is to create a website. Webflow allows you to create amazingly designed, beautiful websites without knowing any code. And the drag and drop editor is the most advanced that I've come across. Um, not only that, you have a ton of capabilities within this editor. So how I use it, well, first my personal website's built in Webflow and it allowed me complete customization of that. But also with companies that I work with, we set up lead generation pages, different landing pages. And, and these are things that we can get done really quickly without any development help. So it's great, everybody loves it, great products, minimal work, and gives you capabilities to do things that maybe you didn't think you could do. I will say that this one requires a little bit of onboarding. So if you're interested in creating websites or you wanna build this skill set, give yourself like a week, sign up for a Webflow account and go through their online tutorials, which are great, and you should be uh, feeling capable in a short amount of time. The next one I wanna talk about is Google Data Studio. So those of you who work in marketing or operations or analytics are already familiar with this, or maybe you're not, and I'm about to make your day, because what Google Data Studio does is it's a free software that aggregates different metrics from different platforms. So what I mean by that is, instead of you logging on to see performance of Facebook ads or Google ads, all of this stuff integrates easily with Google Data Studio, and then you can just build charts on top of it. And Google Data Studio is so good that now I prefer just linking up Google Analytics to Google Data Studio versus going to Google Analytics because the interface is so much easier to deal with in Data Studio to get the data that I want. And if I had to choose one tool that I just absolutely needed to have, I would choose Google Data Studio and it's free. Rounding out infrastructure tools that I use is Airtable. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Airtable is like a more powerful Google Sheets. It allows you to store images. It lets you do uh, functions across different bases. It lets you pull in images or PDFs from different places. So I use this for a lot of different purposes. When I'm managing Facebook ads and creative, I like to set up Airtable so that I could figure out you know, what ads are performing the best. When I'm doing uh, personal CRM, just keeping in touch with people, I put all of that information in an Airtable. And um, for me, it's taken the stuff that I would normally reluctantly use Google Sheets for, and now I happily use Airtable because it's more organized and more powerful, and it allows me to enter all of the data that I need. And otherwise, I would say go to Airtable, check out some of their examples, because again, like Webflow and like some of, and like Google Data Studio, 
there are templates for you to save down and then you can customize from there and it's really easy to get started. Next, we're talking Figma. Figma is changing the way that people do design. It's easy, and again, we get back to this, people who aren't professionals, like people who aren't professional designers or UI, UX people can still contribute when you use a software like Figma. It allows for you to collaborate and easily create um, wireframes or mockups in a product and then have people comment on it or change it. And so for me, I use it for everything. Just like the others, if you don't already have an account on Figma, then I would encourage you to get one and just play around and see if it could add to your workflow at all. Out of all the different tools for marketing, the one that I'm going to recommend is Ahrefs. This is your out of the box tool for SEO, search engine marketing, anything that has to do with backlinks or tracking competitors. There's a ton of tools out there. I also like tools like SpyFu. I use Ahrefs for a ton. I mean, the standard ways of using it are to look at SEO progress, to look at backlinks, so people who are linking to you or your competitors, so you know which publications to link, reach out to, to link to your products. Um, but I also use it for things like YouTube keyword volume. So I can go enter different keywords for potential videos and see which ones bring back the highest volume. And then I know that maybe that's a more popular video that I should be creating. The next one that I wanna talk about is something that everyone's heard about and it's Adobe Photoshop. But the thing about Photoshop is it is still the leader of design software. So there are a lot of these competitors popping up that are telling you that you could create wonderful designs from templates without using Photoshop, to which I would say, you just need to learn Photoshop. It is a hundred times more powerful than all of these other softwares that are out there. It allows you to fully customize. It has amazing ability to do graphic design. And really, you could do pretty much whatever you want design-wise in Photoshop. So this is less to introduce you to the tool and more to say if you, are thinking about learning Photoshop, if you're looking for something that you could learn over a couple weeks, like over the holidays or whatever, I would invest in Photoshop. The amount that it gives you in terms of design and being able to communicate your designs is priceless. So I love Photoshop. I use it on a daily basis. I use it for creating ads, creating thumbnails, uh, creating mock-ups of websites, just everything possible that someone might look at design related. I, I put through Photoshop and there's nothing that comes close to this for me. The next one is another technical one and it's MailChimp. So there are a lot of different companies out there that can help you send emails to different listservs and more are popping up every year. MailChimp is the older one, it's the tried and true one and it's still the one that I absolutely recommend to people. It's easy to get started, it's, how, it's good in terms of how it delivers emails, it's got a great email builder. So I just like MailChimp. I've had great experiences every time I use them. And if I'm ever thinking about creating an email list or sending out to an email list, then I will end up using MailChimp. And finally, of course, we need to end with Facebook's ad library. Most of you are familiar with this, but I still bring this up in my MBA class uh, when I was teaching. And this is something that all the students were excited about. This is Facebook's transparency. So it lets you see what ads each company is running. But if you are a marketer or you're working in product, it allows you to spy on your competitor strategies for free. So you can go to Facebook's ad library, you can type in companies that you like, companies that are in your space, and just see what ads are running. But not only can you see what ads are running, you can also see what landing pages they're driving to. And it's a way for you to map out competitors' funnels, full funnels, from ad to all the way down to conversion for free. These are the nine tools that if you're not aware, you should check out. And if you are, and you haven't signed up for an account, then maybe this is enough to get you to go, you know, sign up and give them a few minutes and see if they're right for you. Okay, if you like this stuff, then please hit that subscribe button. It would help a ton. And if you wanna watch some more videos, I've got a few up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.